Myers, and she's going to talk to us about the landscape of, of novel tools. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we could also talk about malaria, but I think that's not the topic of the, of the day. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach, having like there's been so much presented on, on specific countries and specific data and specific protocols that I, um, I thought it might be useful to go through in general what, what FIND does, but maybe along the way it might be hel it, it's helpful to identify what studies might be useful and in what way additional studies might be helpful to advance product development in diagnostics or just inform what is necessary to be, to be done in that space. So rather than going through individual protocols, I will just sort of give you like a whirlwind of studies of what we're doing. But just like uh, Heidi, I've probably shared most of those protocols with everybody that's asked me, and I'm really happy to do that again, so just ask me, and, um, and, we, and I share them. So I'm not, talk not talking about the individual design of the study because it's highly confidential. It's just, I think, for the purpose of what might be of interest, um, I chose not to do that. So just maybe for, for the people, most of you probably know what FIND is, and, but um, just for the ones that haven't heard of FIND. Uh, FIND stands, first of all, for Foundation of Innovative New Diagnostics. FIND is an, a PDP, a product development and delivery partnership. I think most famously probably um, known around uh, the gene experts. So what FIND's mission is, um, is to develop new diagnostics and to support the development of new diagnostics in, for poverty-related diseases. And the gene expert cartridge for TB was one of the big successes a couple of years ago where FIND was involved and helped to develop the, the test and also helped with the, further down the line with the negotiations of the price. So the way, um, the way we set up and the way FIND was funded, well, funded and founded, um, many years back was out, out, of the, out of the WHO, and that's why we're still based in Geneva, but it was an initiative to help support the development of necessary commodities specifically for diagnostics for diseases of poverty. And we work across um, a number of diseases, TB, malaria, and non-malaria fevers, hepatitis C, um, neglected tropical diseases, um, <laughs> AMR and outbreaks, and I think I'm forgetting one, but I, I will come back to me. But so the, the, what, we, what we aim to do is to bridge between science and patients. And it's like, it, that's a very big thing to say. And, and I, ultimately, I guess that's what we're all trying to do. But what, what really the aim is of a product development partnership is to initiate development where, where otherwise development wouldn't be happening. And that through technical support, through the provision of, um, of, of specimens to help the, partner, the commercial partners to develop appropriate tests, but then also what we call here guide use and policy, which is really clinical trials to help support clinical trials, work through partnerships with academic groups, with commercial groups to do um, studies to help getting tests evaluated, get tests regulatory approved. And then ultimately here at the end, that's access, really getting, t getting data that show um, that the test is useful and data that can be actively used by the WHO and by national um, policy makers to change policy. And that's then ultimately, I guess, when it reaches the patient. So that's fine works across that whole area. And I'm gonna give examples of what we do in the space of malaria and fever across all of that. So this is, uh, I'm not gonna go into detail, but this ultimately is the development pipeline and the different development steps that you have to sort of tackle when you want to develop a new diagnostic test. And, and that starts with the feasibility work and you know that a lot of that's been discussed and, and, and that's identifying what you actually need, what markers would you use, work on, define what that test would need to look like. Some of that was just described like a malaria plus like two lines, you know, this kind of description. And, um, and then you need to actually move into commercial development because ultimately I mean, for FIND, the aim is that you would have a long-term sustainable test and that that is most likely applicable if you have a commercial partner and a commercial test that is, is produced under regulatory, uh, regulatory approved and then continuously produced with, uh, with quality, appropriate quality assurance. And at the end of this is, is access where you would then have um, national policy change and WHO policy recommendations that normally helps to get the national policy changed and then really work with the national partners to get things rolled out. So we, we work across all these areas. 
And um, I think it's mainly the, the parts that I hear sort of highlighted in, in blue, where we, where, where we, where we help, you know, tack, help support development the most, and that's de helping develop a product specs, process validation, de validation of the essay, um, a lot of validation through commercial, with partners, but then really at that place in the development stage, really also providing samples for the, for the commercial partners. But uh, without going through all of this, um, I'm going to come to this very dramatic slide, but but I think it highlights, even though it's it's probably slight, it's it's obviously oversimplified. It's it's not really, you know, there's probably a lot of other hurdles along the way if you're a product developer, but ultimately the way we look at it and the way we try to bridge and support development is across those three different gaps and the, or the valleys of death, if you want, and really the first. Because if you're, if you're a developer um, for, for a diagnostic, that's where most, um, basically that's where the most, most of the tools come up, fall out of the pipeline. So, you know, I think everybody has seen these pipelines sometimes, um, uh, or these landscapes, sometimes, I think uh, there was re the last year, two years ago, the unit aid, the fever, fever landscape of different products that's in the pipeline. And I know it always looks like, why is nothing moving? But it's not moving sometimes because of that, because they're dropping out. Things, everybody, a lot of people have very good ideas, but to actually get stuff all the way through to the end is very, very hard. And so 40% of, um, of products uh, already sort of fail at the first hurdle because the, the product isn't designed in the right way. It's not meeting all these questions that were, came up. Where would you use it? At what level of the health system? And therefore, what does it actually need to look like that you not adding more burden to the healthcare worker, but that you're helping to ele elevate the burden, like that you take away, um, that you help task shifting, that you help making things simpler. So if, if that is already not done at this point, if the scientific and technical specs are not right, the product is not ever gonna come out at the other end as an actual product. Um, regulatory for a lot of um, diagnostic products is really complex, you have the national, um, regulatory authorities, but you also have FDA, you have CE, it's changing at the moment. So regulatory studies are difficult to do, they're very expensive, and so a lot of product um, companies might not want to necessarily do that if it's a product that has not going to be a high return and, and commercial return. So find, so what we're trying to do is bridge that sort of gap by helping doing these studies for developers so that your ha regulatory approval can be achieved and then at the end, um, you can have the greatest test and a really great idea, but if nobody wants to use it because government is not paying for it, national health insurance isn't paying for it, big procurement agents are not buying it for whatever reasons, most of the time because it doesn't fall into a, a big bucket, um, you have a great test, but it's not going to get to the patient. So this is sort of the, 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 the different... Um, valleys of death <laughs> that, that we are trying to address with some of the studies and you know in the context of thinking about protocols and studies that are necessary maybe pick a death valley and maybe <laughs> and maybe design a study to 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 help so what's in the in the context of malaria and non-malarial fevers i mean we've talked about this and we've talked about a lot of these really the the, the aim is to to holistically and integrate it um treat patients in a, or approach patients and approach this management of patients in a holistic way. Um, and, and that means that, you know, a patient presents and there's multiple different things that might want happen, whether that's giving appropriate malaria treatment, providing the appropriate antibiotic, or even deciding whether patients need antibiotic, uh, not providing any, any necessary treatment, sending people home, providing supportive care, or a severity assessment, as we've just said. So we don't necessarily work across all of these areas, and that's not necessarily because um, we think one is more important than the other, but it's very much driven by funding and availability of resources. But so what the, the, the things that we're addressing is obviously we work a lot on malaria, um, and what we've focused on over the last couple of years is really looking at these questions about antibiotics. Do patients need antibiotics? Do the right patients get antibiotics? And then also, what drug, what, what antibiotic is, is, um, should be given. Um, one way how we approach most of our project is by trying to 
bridge that first, 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 first valley of death by saying, okay, what does the test need to look like? And, and it's not just what do I think the test needs to look like, but what does the community think and the users, what do they actually need and what does it need to, to be looking like and to be useful and to be implementable? And so what we do is um, we develop target product profiles. And I think maybe not all of you, but a lot of you will have been involved in the target product profile definitions um, at FIND in one way or another. The way it works is through consensus building across stakeholders, surveys, meetings, long discussions. But ultimately, the aim is to come up with target product profiles for a diagnostic test that can be put out there so that developers understand what is actually necessary. And um, so we, in, in, across the, the program, we, we're trying to address different levels of the health system. So this is a very simplistic health system here, um, but basically stretching from reference level to community or health, health um, lowest le level of the health system in terms of, like, that's the first one here. Let me try if I can find the right button. Ah. So here, the, the, the top one is triage test to differentiate bacteria from non-bacterial infections. So that is not the triage test necessarily to look at severity, but it's the triage to, to um, target prescribing better. You know, you can look at this in the context of AMR to say, well, we, we want to reduce the overuse of antibiotics, which is a huge part of this. But I think it's also, you know, making sure that the people that need antibiotics are actually getting antibiotics. Um, at the higher level of the health system, we've been involved with what, what, I, what we call here simplified blood culture, but it's ultimately looking at, you know, what would better and simpler microbiology need to look like to be able to roll it out more widely, be, to do antimicrobial resistance and monitoring and so on. And so we've published um, TPPs around this context and we're doing some studies, but, you know, that simplified blood culture is one way of looking at it. I there's many other approaches. MSF has got um, activities in this field, and I think with the emergence of AMR, this, is, this area here has to, you know, is gonna get bigger. And I mean, there's a lot of funding going into this area now. And in fact, actually, we see a lot of funding going into this. So we've, we've sort of stopped working on this at the moment because there's a lot of funding from the US going into US-driven work in this space. So there's no place for fine at the moment. There's no need for us to get involved because actually this is that much of an issue in high-income countries that, 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 that this is being addressed. Uh, multi uh, multiplex um, approaches to target better the antibiotics. So this is the TPP work and some other um, work that I think Terry is going to go into as well. But I'm going to show you some some very um, more simpler simpler sim multiplex approaches, and then the combination. And this, you know, Valerie's a touched at this already. The, the sort of e-health approach is looking at algorithms. How can we more holistically use the diagnostic solutions that we have? And, uh, oh God, now I'm doing the same as Heidi. <laughs> um, and link them up into clinical algorithms that are available or that are being developed to ensure that, you know, the tests, that the, the, the data that are generated are actually translating into action and are not just accumulating on a database. Now, um, triage tests. So what I'm going to do now is gonna just going to walk through these different sections and give you some flavors of what we're doing. And in this case, I, I have like two slides that very briefly talk about the studies, just because it might be interesting, but it's a very brief overview. And again, here, if anybody is more interested in the protocol, I will share that. Um, many, a couple of years ago, we've worked on this target product profile development um, to define what would this test need to look like. That's what we've done. That was published, you see it on here. Many, actually a number of you in the room were involved in that. And the reason why we, we're doing this development is re and these TPP developments, and that's why I've been showing this like very dr dramatic slide with the death valleys, is really because to define, everything falls from there. Like if you define the test wrong, well, or, or whatever we define at that point is what we're trying to address in the studies that come afterwards. So this is obviously challenging because sometimes, you know, knowledge changes, opinions change. But this is ultimately what we're trying to do. So it's sometimes a little bit challenging to reconnect a couple of years later and say, oh, maybe we should have done this a bit differently. 
but that's the reason why we're trying to build this consensus and why this is quite an important step in the process for us. Um, we do biomarker validation studies, or you know, this is very early. If you think about the product development pipeline, it's sort of in that feasibility space. Which of these markers could actually? Is this still like? <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Well, I think I can do that. Um, so, so um, which of which of the markers would perform well? We've heard about the heterogeneity between the data for etiology studies that they're very hard to to compare. Well, a similar thing applies to studies around biomarkers, like which of them works in which setting. Um, there's a lot of heterogeneity around the data. So, what we were trying to do is set up a study um, that looks at three different sites with different epidemiologies and um, looks at markers that are published out of the literature and, um, and evaluates them in, that, in the settings where, um, you know, where we're interested in, and that fits with the development, with the, uh, the way that it was defined in the TPPs. Um, others, we're working on to, um, tests with commercial partners, as I said, that's, we, we're doing this. Here there's one malaria and CIP assay with the aim, very similar, similar but different to have this double um, combo test where you have a malaria test and then if the malaria test is negative, you have some sort of guidance, CRP being suboptimal, but you have some guidance. That was the vision of that test and that test is, is being currently um, evaluated in India and hopefully we can do some bigger studies um, later in the year. And then um, I think I have um, a bit more on that, like the utility, like how, do they, how are they used? Um, to sort of bridge that last gap, like to, to provide ga um, data to help um, governments. This very briefly, I think I can skip through this given um, constraints and time and that um, we've heard about study designs. But well, here we've 1,500 patients. Um, the aim of the, aim of the test was defined to be at, com at the primary healthcare level to help guide the triage. Um, who needs antibiotic and who doesn't so to, to reduce overuse of antibiotics. So therefore, we've designed a study to, to address that question. Um, the biomarkers that we've, we've selected, you know, out of the literature, some of them were already on the slide before, so there's nothing. There's more, we, we're looking at more new ones that are out there. FabryDX, the test was mentioned by Heidi as part of that um, study as well. Oops. And as, um, as much as I would have liked to actually show you data, we only have data for the first 400 something patients and this is just a snippet, but from a diagnostic perspective, what I think is maybe quite interesting is that this is a breakout from the different syndromes of the patient and half of each of those had malaria. So this is not, so what we've done is we used clinical symptoms and um, laboratory data and they were then assigned by a clinical panel into bacteria and non-bacteria. And based on, on this assignment, if you overlay the malaria data, half of them in each have malaria. That makes it from a diagnostic perspective very challenging to really, um, you know, come up with a, te like, it, it raises the question, you know, what kind of test do you need actually to address that problem? And I think it's, so the question is not, is it malaria or is it not malaria? I think we need to look at this more together, which is, I, I think, what's been mentioned before already. Um, Biobank, I've mentioned this as part of this um, work. We're supporting developers by providing a biobank, a well-characterized biobank, and you can go, actually, if any of you wants to develop a test or is developing a test, um, please contact contact us through the website. Uh, multiplex, multi analyte multi multiplex assays. Again, I think this, uh, Heidi has mentioned this, this was one effort trying to understand what is actually out there, what is the causes of the fevers, and uh, this is challenging, and this is, you know, we've heard all these data, this is not making it very easy to design a good test. One test that we've been, um, that we have been working on with ChemBio is specifically looking at Asia and Asian pathogens with the, with the idea and vision to have actionable results, so viral pathogens and, um, and tox doxycycline responding pathogens, and meliodosis in the mix there as well. It's been, um, it's been mentioned a couple of times already. The test will be evaluated in two weeks. We're starting studies in Thailand. So that's, I think, quite exciting. Hopefully, um, that we can, you know, it's not a solution that will solve all the problems, but hopefully it can address some. 
Um, other studies you've um, had, you've seen that that um, um, the, the the black culture work. We're doing studies in Botswana, looking um, in a, a randomized controlled trial in the hospital there to see how patient ad um, how clinicians adopt the um, the treatment decisions when they have black culture results fast available. So we're using the the um, we're using the um, a, a rapid molecular method to identify blood cultures after, so after the blood culture is positive, but then the identification is done by molecular methods. And that's an ongoing study. Again, I have no data yet because we haven't recruited all the patients. Um, this is, and this is the idea of bringing it all together. So we've been involved and we've been funded um, for a year now on looking at different electronic algorithms and how we can integrate diagnostics to make this, you know, to translate data better and obviously at the same time to help, um, help improve um, surveillance data, help improve patient care, and you know, in our context, make the most of diagnostic tools that are available and out there. And that links up, like fine, there's a lot of things I haven't mentioned, but there's a lot of activity on, got it, um, on connectivity <laughs> and data, data usage at find. And these are demonstration studies. I'm not gonna go into it because I'm, I've been booted off this, the, the stage, but one thing I wanna mention, there's one activity that's currently out there. There's two more, I think five more days. So you could apply to partner with FIND on um, what we call the Diagnostic Use Accelerator. And the vision here is to generate data in multiple countries to inform local policy. How can you use currently available tests um, for fever management integrated into the, um, into the ongoing um, standard of care and how can we, and how can we, ad how can we improve the outcomes? Well, outcomes can be hard, but how can we improve the targeting of antibiotics and hopefully outcome? So this is something that's been funded by DFID and it's, a, it's a, where we're currently looking for partners to, to work with us on developing protocols and, and have like a uniform approach for multiple different sites. So it's gonna be one protocol across the different sites and really the aim is we're working very hard with the WHO to define what data do you need to improve, to change policy. So this is you know, why we're sitting in Geneva and that's what we're trying to do. So if anybody wants to apply for this, it says 15 pages, but I think you can, <laughs> you can probably send less than that. Um, yeah, and then you know, everything else in this space, demonstration studies is, is along the same way. We're trying to get data to help change policies. Um, yeah, and we work across the world and yeah, I acknowledge my team. Thank you very much for your attention. I think we can try to take one or two.